we've all been in a car, we've all driven when we've been a bit tired or, or stressed and our mind's been somewhere else. And that, you know, in those situations, accidents do happen. But with a system like this in the, you know, city traffic, you could let the car take over and you could let the car do most of the hard lifting for you, therefore making the roads a lot safer and hopefully cutting down on accidents. And again, it comes all back to safety, safety for the occupants of the car, safety for the people around the car and safety for people in the city. Every day, you and I use one of the most complex systems on the planet, something that does thousands of calculations per second. Of course, it's your brain. And when you're driving, all of these calculations are taking place automatically without you even thinking about it. Your sensory systems, your motor systems, and your cognitive systems all working seamlessly together. However, automakers think they can do better than that. Of course, Tesla's grabbed all of the headlines with their FSD over the past few years. But that's with a radar and camera approach. Now manufacturers are starting to use LiDAR, and there's a big, big difference, and we're going to find out why a little bit later on. So we're here with Xpeng and the P5, one of the first mass-produced cars with LiDAR, and we're going to use the City Navigation Guided Pilot to drive us through a city of 20 million people without really driving myself. It's going to be a very unusual experience. However, I do have a mission whilst I'm here, and it's a mission given to me by my family to find the best cake to take back to Shanghai. So let's give it a try. Welcome to Fully Charged. There's a very early video on Fully Charged Show of Robert driving a Nissan Leaf, which was full self-driving and very impressive technology at the time. However, the car was stuffed full of computers. It was full of machines whirring away. And they were whirring away so much that the battery range of the car was only about 40 kilometers or 40 miles. Fast forward just a few years, and now all of that tech is packed into a much tighter space. In fact, there's no bumps or bulges or anything. You can just about see the two LiDAR units down at the bottom there. And that's the big difference between this and Tesla's full self-driving, which uses cameras and radar. This uses cameras and radar plus LiDAR. Right, so we're now leaving the Xpeng HQ. And as you can see, I'm driving at the moment. We're not in self-driving mode. Uh, just need to get out onto the main road and then we can start the self-driving. Now, to be perfectly honest, I don't know if I'm a fan of self-driving. I quite like being in control. Um, so this is going to be quite a surreal experience having the car driving itself in a city as busy as Guangzhou. So I'm briefly going to take a minute to explain the difference between radar and LiDAR. This car has both systems, so why? What's the difference? So LiDAR is based on lasers. And in fact, these two small black boxes here are firing out thousands of lasers every second, 150,000 times a second, in fact. So when I'm standing here, the car can send out a laser, hit my leg, and then bounce back and it will see that, okay, there's a person standing here. And it got this kind of broad sweep within a fairly close area. Radar is a lot more kind of wavy and sees a lot further. So having both of the systems in place makes sure that the system is as safe as possible. Tesla's full self-driving only uses the radar system. This uses both. Now, LiDAR is, is great for an environment like today where it's bright uh, and weather's very clear. Doesn't work so well in like foggy or snowy conditions, which is when the radar comes in and why the P5 has both systems in the car. So we're just about to get onto the main road, which is when I can activate the system. And it's very, very easy to activate. It's two presses down on the uh, stalk here. There you go. So I've got to keep my hands on the wheel at the bottom. But it's, it's driving, I'm not accelerating. It's changing lane, there you go. Uh, my hands are gently on the steering wheel here. And this is ridiculously surreal. It feels weird that I'm in the driving seat, behind the wheel, 
but I'm not controlling the car. So now it's doing a U-turn. There you go, it's turning in my hands. This is a tight U-turn. And there's a person in the road which is detected and it's just being a little bit cautious. And then now we're picking up speed. Joining the traffic. And it's amazing because on this screen here and the screen here, I see this full 3D view of the road, including the cars in front of us and the cars behind us. So I'll even notice if people are going around me uh, and cutting in. So I think it's important to differentiate between the highway NGP and city NGP, which is what this is. Highway NGP came out in 2021 uh, on the P7. And so that's, you know, driving along the highways, highways of, uh, of the motorway network in China. Now this is the city one, which is obviously a, a lot more complicated. You know, there's so many more things you've got to worry about. And here we go, there's a construction ahead. So the lane no longer exists, but we navigate onto the highway pretty easily. And I think it's important just to say this is not the final, final version. This is still the engineering car. Um, so they're still making tweaks to it before releasing it, hopefully this year. And from my initial impression so far, it's a, a genteel driving experience. It's not aggressive. It's flowing with the traffic. You know, we're not holding everyone up. Uh, and it, it's, it's kind of got this sixth sense that if it sees someone kind of wandering into your lane or not keeping their lane discipline very well, it does gingerly kind of press the brake, not suddenly slam on the brakes, which is what you want from an intelligent kind of driving system. There's people over there who are cutting the grass and they've got cones and it's detecting all the cones in the road. And that's two lanes away. And on the screen, there's about 15 different cars that it's got. So that's probably through the LiDAR and the radar that you can see all of those cars. You can see the speed camera ahead. It can, I mean, it's, it's very high precision napping, mapping, not napping, mapping which means that I think they said to a centimetre level that the, the car's location can be detected to a centimetre. But it's, I think it's important to mention one thing is that it's difficult to do a comparison with Tesla FSD because they don't have Tesla FSD here in China. And obviously these cars are, are not in the US where it is, it's being tested uh, with Tesla. So you can't really do a, a strict comparison side by side, but it's clear that there's you know, advantages to, to this system and advantages to the Tesla system. One day perhaps we can test them side by side. Right, so we're almost at our cake shop and we're gonna buy some of the most delicious cakes in Guangzhou. So let's get out the car and go and get some yummy cakes. Right, so we're on the streets of Guangzhou, we just parked up. Very hectic and noisy and chaotic, which is what Guangzhou is all about. I think it's down here. Oh. <laughs> I walked straight past it. Right, let's go and continue our drive, or not drive as it would be. So we're now in the center of Guangzhou. We're surrounded by skyscrapers and we're in really difficult traffic situations now. So we just stopped at the lights. I couldn't see the red light in front of me uh, because there was a bus blocking it, but the car could because the cameras are higher up. It's got a better field of view than, than I do. There's a lot of confidence you feel from being in the car and it's, you know, we've been driving this, I don't know, maybe an hour now. And uh, it's, it's kind of like a 
quite courteous driver. So if people are indicating in the other lane and they want to go in front of you, then the car will let them out. And you know, it's not aggressive driver or anything. So it's actually quite a relaxing drive. And the good thing is that I, you know, I sometimes think these systems are a bit nannying. So the warning that I just got to, to keep looking ahead, there's a, a sensor in the, in the A pillar here, looking at my eyes, seeing where they're looking. So if I look away for too long, it'll give me a warning. If I take my hands off the steering wheel, it'll give me a warning. And eventually it, it gets so annoyed that it tugs on the steering wheel three times. It's like, come on, pay attention. So it's, it's good in that respect and it's, you know, more redundancy. So I can't just sit here and play on my phone. I've got to actually focus on what's going on and maybe even take over if, if things get really complicated, but that hasn't happened so far. So we're now coming up to what I would assume to be a really complicated situation. We come up to a roundabout. Um, now there aren't that many roundabouts in the US. There are a few in the UK. So now it's going to try and get us round this roundabout in very busy traffic with people cutting in and out. There you go, we're changing lane. And here we go, up the bridge to the roundabout. Lots of buses around still, trucks. And we've, we're going on the third exit of the roundabout, so the one furthest away from us, basically. And so this is going to be complex. All right, we've got seven seconds till the traffic light goes green. And then we're going to go for the, oh, sorry, fourth exit on the roundabout. So all the way around, here we go. Green light, which I can't see, but the car can see. And the lane splits. Bus is in that lane, so here we go. And it's not shy at accelerating, we're keeping in line with the traffic. And there's no, well, the lines have worn away here, so it's more difficult to see where the car has to go. And there's cars pulling in from that side, and it's braking just in case. We're going round. We're going round. Wow. I could have done it with one of these on my driving test in the UK. <laughs> Roundabout's always the scariest thing to navigate, but this has just done it with no stress at all. And I think my overall impression is that, well, I'm just blown away at how it's been able to drive me in a, one of the busiest cities in the world almost at rush hour without much problem. Uh, I'm really impressed by how it can change lanes and it, it does it with a lot of confidence, which is, uh, which is quite nice to see. And it makes you, gives you a lot of confidence as well. It is still a little bit nervous, I think, when people are cutting out, um, when there's bikes in the road who shouldn't be in the road, like the one in front of us now. It goes a little bit too slowly just for my liking, but it's learning, so every, journey it takes, every journey, every one of these cars, X-Pen cars takes, it'll be learning. And so in six months, in six months, this will feel very different to what it feels like now, I imagine. Um, maybe some of that nervousness will disappear. But overall, it's done 99% of this journey with absolutely no problem whatsoever. My mission today has been a success. I have the freshest cakes to take home with me to Shanghai. But on a more serious note, this is a seriously impressive feat of engineering, software and hardware engineering. And I think that it's not just about the people who buy these cars, but it's about the people who are using the roads. If we can make the streets much safer through self-driving for pedestrians, for cyclists, then it's, cities are gonna be a much better place for everyone. And what XPen have been able to do with this system has seriously impressed me. So that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video from China. We've got plenty more coming up very, very soon. Um, we have all of our Patreon links, our YouTube memberships around this video. And if you have been, thank you for watching.